on this Saturday night. Worries over weather in the West. Why BC is battling a wildfire season that's ramping up at a time when it usually dies down. Our weather modeling is saying that our fire season will continue until at least mid-September. As hot, dry conditions kill crops across Alberta. Canola harvest of the future. I do see this as being, uh, provide some long-term stability for farmers. How farmers are growing more heat-tolerant varieties, but will it be enough to meet market needs? Support the stranded. The U.S. government pushes airlines to help travelers or face new rules. Plus, carving a new future. It helps you get through your days and stuff here. We're all trying to rehabilitate. The Totem Pole Project, helping Vancouver Island inmates build community in prison. Global National with Bara Nasser. Reporting tonight, Neetu Gagcha. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Across Canada, many forested and grassland regions have been dealing with wildfires as extreme heat and dry conditions impact much of the country. In British Columbia, new fires are popping up daily. Officials say the current conditions combined with a highly charged weather forecast are cause for concern. Kamil Kermali has our top story tonight. As the wildfire fight continues across BC, crews face an ongoing threat, not from the ground, but from above. To the lightning we've seen in the last couple of days, um, because we did see an increase. There were more than 11,000 lightning strikes in the past 48 hours in BC. Out of more than 100 new fires started in the province over the last two days, nearly three quarters of them were caused by lightning, extending the province's wildfire season, usually winding down this time of year. Now, in a rare occurrence, it's expected to go on until late September. Within the last five years, we've definitely seen uh, warmer and drier conditions, and so our fire seasons have been longer than they had been, you know, previous to that, and that's thanks, you know, to overall weather um, changing. What doesn't help is a lightning-charged forecast. We do have the ingredients, no relief, we're also tracking lightning. This will cause a big concern for the remaining of summer and into early fall. Wildfires continuing to plague the rest of the country. The fire danger index at high or extreme in many parts of Western Canada, including Alberta, where wildfires have already burned double the area they did last year. The last couple of weeks have been very hot in the province here in Alberta. We haven't seen much rain. Uh, the wildfire danger will escalate. It's up to extreme in a lot of different places across the province. Over in Saskatchewan, there have been more than 345 wildfires this year, surpassing the five-year average of 332. Parts of BC have implemented a fire ban. No open fires, no briquettes, and so it's just up. Uh... Uh, propane barbecues at this time. And although that might slow down the number of human-caused fires, all eyes will be on how much damage Mother Nature ignites next week. Kamal Karamali, Global News, Vancouver. This heat wave and lack of rain is killing crops and farmland across parts of Alberta. As Jill Croteau reports, the stress on ranchers and farmers desperate for rain is taking its toll. We need inches of rain. The pasture is so parched in parts of the province, ranchers and farmers say it would take a miracle from Mother Nature for some of their acres to recover. If you don't have nerves of steel, don't go into farming. Luckily for us, I have three businesses off the farm and my wife is full-time employed. <laughs> but if I depended on this as, as an income, you couldn't make it at all. Their cows and calves on this ranch near Black Diamond have nothing to feed on and may not survive. We're now having to look at, okay, now you just have to, you know, cull the crop and take them to the auction and kill them off because there's such a drought here that no other farmers are going to the auction to buy my cows. I have to choose to take my cattle to auction early and sell them at a loss or lower price or pay for more heat, feed and then still lose money. Leroy Newman grows wheat, barley, canola and peas near Blackie. Crops were hurting from it. So this year we were probably going to have an average crop, but uh, it was going to be a bumper crop because we had seven inches of rain in June and then we only then it shut right off in July and we got an inch and a half. The unpredictability and reliance on rain is draining. You learn to grow with it. Like this is farming. A lot of people are in, in hard times right now mentally because some of the guys in eastern Alberta are they're in their third year of a drought. 
and he says he's running the combines off their regular schedule because in these heat waves, there's a higher risk of sparks from equipment triggering a fire in the tinder dry fields. Jill Croteau, Global News. It is often called Canada's Cinderella crop, and now the market for canola is growing yet again. New clean fuel regulations are putting a homegrown climate solution on the map. But as Sarah often reports, whether or not the industry will be able to meet the demand remains in question. Ian Chitwood is looking at a bumper canola crop this fall. We can get an early harvest. Fantastic. And it's a good thing. Not only have producers seen record high canola prices this year, they're also preparing to spread their seed to a new market. This is a really good homegrown solution that uh, fuel producers have. So it's a win-win for everyone. As part of the clean fuel regulations released by the federal government earlier this summer, fuel distributors are required to reduce emissions 15% by 2030. One of the ways they can do that is by diluting petroleum with a lower carbon substitute. Enter canola crops, which under the new regulations have finally made the cut. We've been working with them over the past number of years to include uh, canola specifically as a biofuel feedstock. And with the new regulations, uh, the CFR recognizes canola as a low carbon intensity biofuel foodstock. But questions are being raised about the overall impact the changes will have on curbing emissions, one that will depend on whether farmers can rein in emissions during the process of seeding, fertilizing, harvesting and transport. If done poorly with poor practices, you can have biofuels pathways that are as high in greenhouse gas emissions as a petroleum based product. Um, all the way through to pathways that do it really well and, and actually um, have a net negative effect on the environment. For consumers, some suggest the addition of more biofuel in the mix could also reduce fuel efficiency and continue to drive up costs, both of food and fuel. I expect between 2024 and 2030, an average increase of anywhere between three and four cents a litre, and that's over and above the government's current increase of three to four cents a litre on its carbon taxes. Canola, just one of the crops that will supply enough number of new major renewable diesel refineries, including a 20,000 barrel a day facility near Edmonton, opening in 2024. Yet more proof demand is about to surge for this already hot commodity. Sarah Offen, Global News, Calgary. In southern China, farmers are struggling to save crops threatened by unprecedented drought. The countryside is tinder dry with a heat wave that's lasted more than two months. On Friday, state media reported temperatures reached 45 degrees. In some regions, water is being redirected from canals and streams into the cracked fields to irrigate crops. Since June, the country has been grappling with extreme weather from heat waves to historic floods. In northern China, rescue teams are trying to evacuate some people who've been trapped in their homes after heavy rainfall. The United Nations says it's working with Western countries to get Russian food and fertilizers to global markets in order to avoid a global food crisis. Without fertilizer in 2022, there may not be enough food in 2023. Getting more food and fertilizer out of Ukraine and Russia is critical to further calm commodity markets and lower prices for consumers. The UN Secretary General says Russia's war in Ukraine has created major obstacles for the shipment of Russian food and fertilizers, even though sanctions imposed by Western nations do not apply to those products. He added that the UN broker deal that allowed Ukraine to resume grain exports last month also included a clause to permit Moscow to ship food and fertilizers to global markets. New video out of Russian-controlled Crimea claims to show the moment Ukrainian drones targeted a military base in the region. Video on social media later showed plumes of smoke rising from the area. Russian authorities say a drone was shot down above the base. It's the latest in a string of attacks near military bases in Russian-held areas of Ukraine and within Russian borders. Kyiv has not taken responsibility for the latest attack. In Somalia's capital, at least 20 people are now dead after a group of Islamic insurgents stormed a hotel. 
The Al-Shabaab militant group claimed responsibility for the armed men who attacked and seized control of the hotel Friday night. They also detonated two car bombs just before the attack. Today, authorities were still fighting with the gunmen who were holding an unknown number of hostages inside. Al-Shabaab, an affiliate of Al-Qaeda, has long fought the Somali government, aiming to topple it with its own regime. As a summer of flight delays, lost luggage and cancellations continues to drag on, officials in the U.S. have offered an ultimatum to airlines. Improve your customer service policies or the government will take action. As Jennifer Johnson reports, Washington says it's ready to adopt new regulations if companies don't step up to support stranded and delayed travelers. From January till July of this year, over 120,000 U.S. flights have been canceled. Millions more have been delayed, and travelers are fed up. I really feel sorry for everybody that's traveling right now. Definitely challenging to fly right now. Now the nation's airlines have been given an ultimatum from the U.S. Transportation Department. Improve customer service or the government will impose new passenger rights. One proposal could go into effect by the end of the year. But the most pressing one is the one issued as a proposed rule by the U.S. Department of Transportation, which requires airlines to refund money if they just delay your flight by more than three hours or if they change your arrival or departure city. That's a big departure from previous rules. The transportation secretary has sent a letter to all the airlines saying the level of disruption Americans have experienced this summer is unacceptable. American taxpayers paid billions to help the airlines stay afloat during the pandemic. Now government officials want airlines to spell out their policies before passengers buy a ticket. The message to the airlines is that you've got to make it easier for passengers to understand their rights and you've got to support passengers when they experience delays. That includes paying for a hotel if a passenger has to wait overnight. The airlines blame turbulent summer weather and air traffic control issues for the bulk of the problems. But most experts say the airlines are still booking millions of flights without enough pilots to fly them. The airlines continue to be understaffed. They continue to be overscheduled. The airlines may be motivated to act quickly. A bill in Congress has just been introduced that would require airlines to issue an immediate refund if they cancel a flight for any reason. With Labor Day weekend, Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, changes can't come soon enough for frustrated travelers. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington. Coming up, the celebrity candidates putting the price of fame at the forefront of the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. The U.S. is a little more than two months away from crucial midterm elections where Democrats fear big losses in Congress to pro-Trump Republicans over President Biden's flailing approval. But a recent shift has suddenly left Republicans worried they may not gain anything at all. As Jackson Prosco explains, Trump's push for erratic, untested and unqualified candidates in key races might already be backfiring with voters. It's a good day to vote. It is. From a former TV doctor to a one-time NFL star. You know, I'm not coming to the Senate to look good. I'm not coming to try to get to become famous. I'm already that. Republicans are pinning their hopes of retaking Congress on celebrity candidates, endorsed by former President Donald Trump. We have so many races that we're leading by a lot. Less than three months out from Election Day, those star candidates are faltering, consumed by low poll numbers, scandals, and big gaffes. Guys, that's $20 for crudite, and this doesn't include the tequila. I mean, that's outrageous. We got Joe Mehmet Biden. Oz has struggled to appear yeah, relatable in the Pennsylvania well, Senate race between that. revelations the former TV doctor owns 10 houses and the fact that he actually lives in New Jersey. Gary, Gary. In the Arizona governor's race, Trump backed Carrie Lake, who backs his election fraud lies. She's well behind her Democratic rival in the polls. We're the fork in the rolls, people. While in Georgia, former running back Herschel Walker is plagued by accusations of domestic abuse. He held a gun to my temple and said, he's going to blow my brains out. This week, the top Republican in the Senate admitted things don't look good. There's a, probably a greater likelihood the House flips than the Senate. Senate races are just different. They're statewide. Uh, Candidate quality has a lot to do with the outcome. There's not much the party can do when its de facto leader still holds such sway. 
To win Trump's endorsement, the candidates have to back the lie that the 2020 election was stolen. If you put up such extreme unqualified candidates, they are both looking like they're on a path to lose. And so I think that's had a big impact on the outlook for you know, how the November midterm elections will shake out. In a year when Democrats once seemed doomed to defeat over inflation and Joe Biden's unpopularity, they found new political life in the choices made by their rivals. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. Ahead, quiet quitting, trending. What the workplace trend sweeping social media actually means. You're watching Global National. One of the world's biggest social media platforms might be helping the rise of a labor movement. It's called quiet quitting, a new trend on TikTok encouraging more employees to rethink their attitudes and put mental health above extra work. As Kyle Benning explains, this idea was already picking up steam outside the app and it could shift the power balance between companies and their staff. And it's time to shut off. It's time to shut off. It's a phenomenon that has taken TikTok by storm. The idea of working 40 hours a week sounds pretty reasonable, but that isn't always what employers expect. And quiet quitting is a concept many are considering. You're not outright quitting your job, but you're quitting the idea of going above and beyond. You're still performing your duties, but you're no longer subscribing to the hustle culture mentality that work has to be your life. Experts say it's something that came forward a few years ago, but working from home has become a catalyst for how employees view their work-life balance. We have started to question the way in which we do work. We have started to re-evaluate our values, our lives, our work habits, and suddenly this has become front and center. And that balance is something Canadians are contending with. An Ipsos poll done for Global News in December 2021 found four in 10 would rather earn 20% less if their work schedule was limited by the same amount. But those discussions can be tricky to have in the workplace. What employee is going to tell their boss, I'm too stressed, I need help finding balance? Not enough. Which is ultimately what drove to the movement for quiet quitting. And now with businesses pushing to hire and retain staff, the concept of quiet quitting could cause a shift in the employer-employee relationship. I think that this is an opportunity for companies to really reassess what does the office structure mean? What does productivity mean? Do we care if people work eight hours a day if they're getting the job done? The way it is portrayed is still a question mark for some. Matthias Spitzmuller from Queen's University says the way work is viewed in North America is far different compared to some continental European countries. So calling it quitting might be viewed as a little harsh. Those are not employees who are quitting. Those are employees who define their work and their lives in a way that allows them to bring the very best version of themselves to work every day. Kyle Benning, Global News. Next, carving a new path. How inmates in BC are finding new purpose through First Nations art. The Stanley Cup got a warm welcome in the streets of downtown Halifax, filled with crowds of hockey fans, as NHL player Nathan McKinnon brought it home for a special parade celebrating his victory. The Nova Scotian won his first Stanley Cup championship back in June, helping the Colorado Avalanche triumph over the Tampa Bay Lightning in the finals. It was the team's first cup win in more than 20 years. Behind the walls of a correctional facility on Vancouver Island, dozens of inmates are taking part in a large-scale carving project. Their goal is a 41-foot totem pole. As Kylie Stanton reports from Victoria, the men are learning new skills while creating a sense of community. With every move, the wood is transformed. A slow, methodical process that brings it back to life. Rounding of the lip, taking our time. But time is something these men have on their side. When you think about it, we're here because we did something wrong or something traumatizing happened to us. And you know, it helps you get through your days and stuff here. We're all trying to rehabilitate. For a handful of inmates at the Vancouver Island Regional Correctional Centre, this 340-year-old cedar log has provided a sense of purpose. Once you get the hang of it, it just comes naturally. Under the guidance of artist Tom LaFortune, they've spent months creating the 41-foot totem a symbol of strength, healing, community, and family. We're all human, but it seems to be forgotten because they're here. So we want to bring that out in them too, to let them know that, that you know, that's remembered. 
out here in the yard, away from cells and structure. There are no numbers. There are no ranks. Everybody's on a first name basis. Everybody's on the same level. It sort of equalized that power dynamic, um, and the there's far more comfort back here. It's been uh, humbling, to say the least. The land happens to be traditional hunting and gathering territory, a crossroads for the region's First Nations. But that has never been formally acknowledged. And I couldn't think of a better way to, to do that than to have a, a house pole here at the centre. When complete, likely by the end of the summer, the pole will be raised into place in the facility's outdoor exercise yard, what could set a precedent throughout the province. These are the kinds of uh, uh, programs and initiatives uh, that, uh, that we are, you know, as a government obviously want to, uh, to support and want to, to see happen. This is putting corrections back in corrections. They say the cedar is medicine with the ability to heal. And it seems while working with it, the inmates are also carving out a new path forward for themselves. You come out here and you, you kind of lose yourself into carving. Um, you know, it's a good way to clear your head. It's good for your soul. Kylie Stanton, Global News, Victoria. Quite the program. And that is Global National for this Saturday night. I'm Neetu Garcha. Tonight's Your Canada is the totem poles at Stanley Park in Vancouver. We love seeing your Canada. Please keep emailing your photos to viewers at globalnational.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you can join us again tomorrow. Have a great night.